It's good to see you. Good to be together. Yeah, I was just sat here and um, <clears throat> feeling pretty nervous um, because I feel there's some sort of healing coming up for me. It seems to be these um, shows have become about <laughs> my expressions. It feels like a, a live expression. Um, and the theme that was running through my week was everything works together for good. And I thought, wow, I really, really want to get this lesson. And I thought it'd be really great to, to talk about that. Um, and what's come up through this is more healing, really. And there's this really core issue that I didn't even know that I had. And it's to do with responsibility. I feel very, very responsible for pretty much everything. And I'll take responsibility for things that I'm not responsible for. And so that's the, the wonderful thing about being here is I just, I don't know how I would have discovered how I feel so responsible. Because what I've learned is, is in the world we can cover this up by um, fixing things in the form, but never actually getting anywhere um, through guilt, through fear. And yeah, just noticing how much I'm actually thinking if I fix the form, then I'm not gonna feel so guilty and forgetting to look at my mind. And so there seems to be this pattern, this, this loop that I keep going around in. And I find myself in, in many situations where <clears throat> I'm seemingly responsible and it's becoming um, tighter and tighter in my mind to basically <laughs> give this up. So it was like, as I was sitting here just before we were beginning, I could feel this tightness, it's actually leaving. And I could feel like the ego sort of don't share about this responsibility. <laughs> um, so clearly it's, it's, it's on its way out. And it's been a big game that was just completely and utterly off my radar. So I guess that's, that's actually a, a prayer for all of us to, um, if you feel to, is just to, to ask, where is it in my mind that I'm not seeing um, these blind spots? and open yourself up to the chance to really see what you can't see. Because ultimately that's, that's our problem, it's the perception. I was actually talking with a friend last night and I thought, oh, I actually felt like I had a pretty good perception. And then as you go along in the course of miracles, you realize that your perception is not actually that great. So we need a lot of help um, in this. And so, yeah, I was thinking just before the show, my, my prayer was, wow, I really, really want to open up to see this from a completely different new angle. Um, I have to open up to something new. I don't know what the answer, answer is to any of this. I have to be willing to be shown the answer to be healed, to release this completely and utterly from my mind. And so that's what I, that's what I wish for you to allow that to come from anywhere, whether it's a friend, <laughs> whether it's in the form, whether it seemingly comes from within, just opening up to all the possibilities. So I think that's my, my prayer at the moment, to really, really see these blind spots because clearly there's, there's been a lot and without my uh, mighty companions being able to consistently bring my mind back to hey, this is this responsibility again, and I'm not even seeing it at all. And then once we're unraveling it, wow, yeah, here it is again. I'm, I'm stuck in this groundhog day. I think that's what um, Andy's gonna be talking about. So it's all working together for good. Um, and it's actually conspiring to help my mind. And I think in that statement, everything's working together for good. It almost gives us the idea that we should be skipping up the road every day and everything's working together for good. But how I'm actually seeing it is, no, it's working together for good is actually undoing the ego, is healing. Healing is the best thing that can, that can happen. And so these lessons can come up that can feel very, very uncomfortable 
and in that moment it doesn't feel like everything's working together for good. It's very hard to have that in my mind. I've, I've been trying, how can this be, how can this be good for me? Yeah, because it's for your healing, it's not to fix in the form. Even if I fix something in the form, it still doesn't help my mind because I've looked in the wrong place. And I can give some examples of as a, how this un unraveled this week. Um, and so I, I was working with an elect, we had an electrical issue. And um, it's funny because it's like when you do maintenance things, it's like it affects a lot of people. And so it's like more responsibility. Have you fixed that yet? What's going on with it? And then it's seen in form that, okay, it's not fixed. He didn't fix it. He didn't do it right. These are all my own, these are all my own judgments that can come up this full responsibility of getting something done in form. And so I was called to this um, electrical problem that I've been called to many, many times. Um, it just keeps coming around. I'm like, oh. and I didn't actually, when I, when I went, to the, went to the issue, I didn't, I didn't particularly feel guilty at that point, but it was more again, okay, I've, there's a problem, and so I need to fix it in the form. And luckily for me, as I was, as I was walking around trying to solve my problem, um, a friend came to me and said, wow, here we are again. You're, you're, hopefully this time, you'll you're heal your guilt. And I thought, wow, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't feeling guilty at this point. I said, yeah, this lesson keeps com co coming around. It's not to make you guilty. It's to look at what you're still holding on to. And I thought, wow, yeah, there it is again. I'm actually thinking that I'm just responsible for the form and I'm trying to work with a form outcome and once the, the electro, electrical problem is solved then, then my problems are solved. And I actually had an engineer over um, helping with this so I was, I was following him around and at that point my friend said, oh, oh you, you've come to heal your guilt. Remember the dream is only for healing. I'm never ever going to get anything right in the form. I just have to look at my mind. And that was the first part of um, seeing again, wow, I'm, I'm feeling responsible for this. And the quick fix is to, to fix it in form. And so great, okay, I'm taking it back to my mind. Wow, do, I, I, didn't even, I didn't actually feel that guilty. But I wanted to, well, I wanted to look more deeply at it. And over the week, this, this, this theme kept coming in with new tasks. And it's like often I get given a lot of things where I don't, I don't really know what the answer is. And particularly, particularly in a maintenance area whereby they use different methods that I've never ever seen before. So something that could have been quite straightforward, I just don't understand um, how things work. So my next thing I felt responsible for was um, a friend came to me and said, I'd, I'd like you to look at this, this water issue. And it was at another house where I, I, I hadn't worked at that house before. I'd like you just to go over and I'd like you to um, just basically make an assessment and, and bring me back the information. And there was no talk of being responsible for it whatsoever. And automatically, I took on this, this responsibility. Oh my God, I've got to fix this problem and I have no clue as to how to fix it. But all that was asked of me is go over there, find out the information, and when you find out the information, message me. There was no talk of fixing it or being responsible for it. And yet, it was like this wave of responsibility came over me. And my friend could see in my face that um, like, um, something's not quite, quite right. So we started to talk about it. And um, I said, oh God, I feel so responsible. I'm going to have to solve this problem. And then that was when it was pointed out to me. I never said any of that to you. And I was so fixed even when she was saying that to me that I, it was so hard for me to, to move what, what do you mean I'm not responsible then? Then why am I going over there if I'm, if I'm not accountable, if I'm not responsible for this? 
No, you're not responsible for fixing it. You're just going to gather the information. And I just felt like this whole thing had then been put onto me and it was my personal responsibility to heal this. And it was actually, wow, look at how my mind is twisting everything to become responsible, even though that, that was not what was asked of me. It's a shared decision. I was a part of this puzzle that was going over to look at it, what would be ultimate for the healing of the whole in this, in this situation, of course. What was the most important thing about dealing with the situation of the water that I'd never dealt with is my own responsibility. And we spent quite some time on this actually, looking at all the facets of my mind. And one part that I discovered was, well, but if I don't take responsibility for this, am I going to withdraw too much and be like, oh well, it's not my problem then, I'm not going to care. So my fear was that I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to care enough, in which case I'd be doomed and I'd get it wrong. And equally, if I am completely and utterly responsible and I must find the decisions on my own, then it's done in guilt and it's done in fear. And so it was asked, do you, do you see another option? And I said, well, no, I don't see another, I don't see another option in, in, in this. If I'm being asked to do something, I'm seemingly responsible. And so the answer was, what about asking for help? And if you were here on, on last week's show, we ended by, hey everyone, let's see um, this week about asking for help and where we don't want to ask for help. So here was that prayer coming forward in my mind. Oh wow, I'd completely forgotten about that, that I can actually ask for help, that I'm not in this on my own. And so what I've been seeing is, is that I seemingly take this on as personal responsibility. And I don't even see that I should join. I should join with anybody. I should ask to make the decision. I think that the decision must come from me and solely me. And my trick is, is that I will join once I've solved the problem, but I won't join until I've given you the gift of, the, of, of solving the problem even if that's the cost of my suffering and my pain. And it's like, well, that's not actually what we're doing. That's not what we're being told. And so I'd like to, I'd like to read actually um, a little bit from, from the course, which should help with this. Um, where is it? It's in um, section four, the illusions of the ego, the ego body illusion, section five. And this is going back to what we began with, with all things work together for good. All things work together for good. There are no exceptions except in the ego's judgment. The ego exerts maximal vigilance about what it permits into awareness, and this is not the way a balanced mind holds together. The ego is thrown further off balance because it keeps its primary motivation from your awareness and raises control rather than sanity to its predominance. The ego has every reason to do this according to the thought system which gave rise to it and which it serves. Sane judgment would inevitably judge against the ego and must be obliterated by the ego in the interest of its own self-preservation. Yeah, so the, the part that really stood out for me and has been stood out in all of this is it's, 
what, what underpins all this for me is control, is I think I need to be in control. And that is actually so, so painful to believe that. And the two, the two scenarios that, that I gave that if, I'm, if I take it on and I'm completely and utterly responsible, I'm not going to join and I'm going to get the job done no matter what it takes. It's all about I'm in control. And I said, when I make that decision is when I believe that I can solve it in, in form. So it's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this in form because I can control the situation myself. And then the other one is, is well, I don't know whether I can do this. So I'm not going to take full responsibility for it. I'm just going to do my best and I can shrug my shoulders off and say, oh, well, I didn't do it, big deal, not my problem. So I can control it. So if anything comes back to me, I can say, well, I never took it on anyway, so it's not my problem. So the control is ruling me that I'm too fearful to take it on because I will fail and I'll look like a failure. And the other way, I do it at the detriment to myself, but I've promised that I will do it and therefore I'm going to follow through on it. But it's through my own, my own self-control my own seeming authority that I believe that I've got to do something. And so what's been coming up through this is, didn't you think to join? <laughs> didn't you think to join with anyone on that? So you didn't feel that you were on your own, that you don't have to be on your own in this any longer. And it's like what Jesus teaches in the Course said, if you knew how much help you needed, you would ask for it. And I think that's, that's the kind of moral of this story in a way for me. If you knew how much help you needed in waking up, you would ask for it. But yet, there's a part that doesn't want to ask for that help because that's the very undoing. That's why I didn't want to talk about this today, this responsibility, because it's clear that it's holding a lot into place that is not actually serving. So I guess that's the prayer that we're, that we're all in today is where actually are we taking responsibility where we're not responsible? We're responsible for accepting the correction in our own minds. I'm, I'm responsible to join with my brothers now. <laughs> That's my new, um, my new prayer. That I need more help than I thought I did. I need help to see these blind spots so I can really see again. And I saw that, I saw that over and over again um, this week. We actually, we actually had a retreat and normally for, for the past few retreats I've actually been in a seeming role that I'm pretty responsible for what happens. And this time I wasn't. I thought, well, that's really, this is really interesting. It was a little bit of a hit to the ego. Well, I'm, I'm not responsible for this. And um, <clears throat> so I was, I, I was helping. And what I would always say when I was responsible for a retreat to everybody, I would say, no one's different here. It's all about us coming together, collaborating and joining together. That it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's all in the service for our own mind. And seemingly because we have participants, it would feel like I had this more responsibility. But yet in that, it was, it was actually, it was actually could be helpful because I really wanted to see the whole picture. 
and that I knew that I couldn't do it on my own. So if I was put into a position where I didn't feel that I could do it, then therefore I would need to ask for help and I would need to join a lot more. And so now being on the outside, I recognised that I had to go to the, to, to, the lead, to the lead much more to make sure that she knew where I was, to make sure that um, I was doing what I was asked because I knew that she was holding the bigger picture and I knew what it was like to be in that role of being so responsible. So I wanted to be as supportive as I absolutely possibly could and equally try and keep away from taking responsibility. And I actually did a couple of times feel like, okay, we need to do, do this or whatever. So, no, 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 it's not, it's not my responsibility. But I, can, uh, but, I, but I can join. And if I'm asked something, I will, I will, I will give and share what I'm seeing. And it was, it was really beautiful, actually, that I could see my own lesson that no matter what I was doing um, in this, it was all vitally, vitally important. And that I didn't have to take responsibility. I wasn't responsible for the whole thing. That I could just enjoy all the aspects of what I was doing. So it was actually very, very restful for me. And I was just coming over to help. I was dr driving over. So I only went a few, a few days to help at the retreat. And a friend said, wow, I really thought you were going to be here because um, you always do the retreats and, 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 you love, and you love doing the retreats. So I thought it was unkind that you, that you weren't here. And I said, yeah, well, that's one way of looking at it. But the other way of looking at it is, is had I had been here, how would I, would I have been able to learn the lesson of responsibility? That would I have been too involved and this responsibility would have come up too high and I wouldn't have been able to have the contrast experience of being here now and actually, actually really, really enjoying it and just, being, and just being led. And she was like, wow, I never, I never saw it, I never saw it like that. And yeah, just the pride in like, I should have a bigger role in this. I know, I know how to do this. No, you're, you're cleaning the toilet, sure. You're making sure all the rooms are clean. And it's like, yeah, that's, I could see it. That's just as in, that's, of course, that's just as important. The healing is the most important thing. And if I can help in any way that I can to help the mind focus on the healing, then that's what I'm going to do. And so it was very, very joyful. And in actual fact, going over there, I, I, there was that relief thinking, oh, thank God I'm not responsible for this. And then when my time was up, I could, I could, I, I could move on. And I thought, wow, I could, I could have that. I want to have that experience when I, when, I, when I do feel responsible. I want to remember that. And I think from my, from my prayer, what, what happened with joining with my, my friend again last night was the moment I feel like it's personal towards me, then that's the point that I need to join. Because I can join really well when I feel like it's part of a group, like for instance in the studio. Um, we all need to be very, very connected and it can't just be on one person's head that makes all of this happen for us all. Everybody's working in the background for me to be here. And so we all have to be completely linked. So I can't all of a sudden sit there and have a problem and think, well, I've just got to solve it. I'm going to need to join in that moment. So if I feel that connection, then it's like, okay, I'm not in this on my own. I know I'm not personally responsible for this. But it's on these moments of when I'm seemingly gone off on a mission on my own, seemingly on my own, and then all of a sudden that is when this moment kicks in and says, I am responsible. And as my friend said to me last night, didn't you think to join? And it was not in my mind at all. Not once did that come into my mind to join. It was, here is a problem, I'm going to solve the problem. And I did think about joining when I had solved the problem, when I had proved that I wasn't guilty. <laughs> so it's all underneath all of this is holding on to guilt, holding on to control, holding on to responsibility. 
and I really, really want to let this go. Yeah, I really do. I have to be shown something different because my way is not working any longer. <laughs> and as my friend said, this, this lesson's only going to be keep coming up until it's done. <laughs> and it might be getting more painful. Well, yeah, bring it on. The mission needs to be done. So the beautiful thing is, is I'm seeing it. So that's the, that's the great thing. And all the help is coming to me, whether I am seeing it from a brother saying, hey, there's that blind spot again. So that's what I wish for you um, this week in whatever your blind spot is for someone to come and give you that gift that might not even feel actually very comfortable. But they say, hey, and even having the courage, actually, if you see your brother doing something that you see is painful and might even be painful for you to go and tell them that it's your responsibility for your own mind, for your own healing, to join and say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. So that could be your lesson too, just to speak up, to offer that blessing, to offer that gift. Because in truth, it's not really my responsibility, my control, it's the control of this whole entire world that's been created, that I created. to be undone, so it cannot be, it cannot be a personal, it's the ego's creation. So I wanted to end um, with, an, with, with a lesson, which I found this morning. And it's a lesson 153. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. We will not play such childish games today, for our true purpose is to save the world, and we would not exchange this foolishness, the endless joy our function offers us. We would not let our happiness slip by because a fragment of a senseless dream happened to cross our minds. And we mistook the figures in it for the Son of God, its tiny instant for eternity. We look past dreams today and recognise that they need no or wish or dream in which attack has any meaning. Now we cannot fear, for we have left all fearful thoughts behind, and in defenselessness we stand secure, serenely certain of our safety, now sure of salvation, sure we will fulfil our chosen purpose as our ministry extends its holy blessing through the world. Be still a moment and in silence think how holy is your purpose, how secure you rest untouchable within its light. God's ministers have chosen that the truth be with them. Who is holier than they? Who could be surer that his happiness is fully guaranteed and who could be more mightily protected? What defence could possibly be needed by the ones who are the chosen ones of God by his election and their own as well? Wow, thank you very much. So many blessings for the week. <laughs> Ask for help. <laughs> I'm telling myself. <laughs> yeah, lots of love. <laughs>